Good afternoon, guys. Good to, good to have you on board, Graham. Thank you for, for joining us, mate. This is terrific of Brighton uh, doing this for us today, and we're thrilled to have you. Um, what was your take on that? Did you, did you look somewhat embarrassed when you heard that Pep described you in, the, in, in those very words? Yeah, I, I, would, I would say so. I mean, what, what does he know? Um, <laughs> um, I think you've just got to understand that there'll be people that will have a different opinion as well. So um, I don't take much um, much from that. It's just, it is what it is. Sure thing. Um, so you've joined us and we're thrilled you've joined us live. We have uh, Mr. Jordan, former club owner, of course, who's with me four mornings uh, every week. Somehow I'm keeping my sanity, Graham. And of course, uh, with one of the, the, the best players who, who played the game with Liverpool, with England, Danny Murphy as well. So we'll get right into it, Graham. Diving in the game. Players diving. We were talking about Harry Maguire post-match there at the weekend, still saying, no, it was a penalty, it was a penalty. Some of the messages that Simon and I see here, Graeme, honestly, they hammer into players when they talk like that. What do you say to your own players day in, day out, Graeme, in terms of that? Do you say to them, look, just do not do it. Don't engage in this. If you're thinking about it, don't. What's your take on it? What's your, what's your uh, approach in this one? Yeah, we would be... To to absolutely to to avoid it, I don't think there's a need for it. Um, I think the way the game is at the moment, the the, the, the speed of the game, uh, and 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 you know that with the, I think Jose Mourinho refers to the modern penalty that, that any sort of contact, you know, leads to a, a penalty. So therefore, the speed of the game and and the and the fact that there's you know a contact can can lead to something means that it, it increases the possibility. It looks like things are happening, but from our perspective, we try to. To make sure our players stay on their feet and and um, and and play the game as as correctly as we can. Do you think the bar has got too low in this one, Graham? That that, that in terms of contact, and it, it's easy for a player to win a penalty these days. Yeah, we were talking about this the other day. It's it's like that. It, it does seem that, that any sort of challenge, any anything, any contact means means it's a penalty I, i'm not so sure it, it's as simple as that I, I think there still has to be a foul there still has to be something that is stopping the the attacker getting getting an opportunity in the box um we've had a few ourselves a few a few quite soft ones that you think and you look back and yeah, i can see why it's given but I, i'm not sure it was the, the biggest foul in the world like i said the, the guys are uh, it's played with so much speed so much pace that um, you still want to keep an element of that, I think, in the box. Yeah, I mean, simulation, Danny, you were never guilty of it in your life when you played, mate, and we love you for that. But simulation is with us, and we can't get rid of it, Danny. It's as simple as that. No, it's true. I think all you can do as a manager um, is make sure that the level of performance isn't making you rely on decisions such as those. I think Graham's team recently have put in a great level of performance. Can I ask you, Graham, with, with the change of... I know your performance level has been pretty consistent from day one, but the obvious change for me has been how hard you've been to beat in the what, last six, eight games. Defensively, you've, you've been much, much better. W was that something you consciously worked on or is that just something that's evolved in, in, in as the season's progressed? It's a, it's a strange one, Danny, because... Even prior to that little run, we were actually defending okay in, in, in terms of open play. If you look at the chances against us, there, there weren't so many. It's I think I think this league sometimes you can get really punished for not too much, and and that's uh, a bit of luck. That's opposition quality. Uh, we we were we were quite we didn't start off the best defending set plays, so that that affected us. So we've we've tried to improve that. And it's a, just a constant process of, of, across the season. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to get uh, punished. You're going to do things that you need to do better. Um, and over time, hopefully, you, you improve those things. Um, I think we had a start of the season that was, ironically, we had a uh, we, we played Wolves in the first first game in the new year. We we're three one down at half time. You're sort of scratching your head, thinking, "Are we three one down here in this game?" Mm. Uh, got it back to 3-3 three, three, and then that galvanised us a little bit. We had a tough week with Newport away in the FA Cup, which was a, obviously a, a banana skin. Uh, then Manchester City on the Wednesday and then Leeds on the Saturday. And <clears throat> we performed well against Manchester City, lost 1-0. And then went to, to Leeds and reduced them to, to not too much and won the game 1-0. And that probably gave us a bit of belief because it doesn't matter what you say. You can talk about performance, 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 but we know that you have to get results at the end of the day. We, 
it, you know that that gives everyone a little lift and it and it means that you're on the right path so we've probably benefited from just some positive results as well I, I noticed you've said graham that this is the greatest period uh, that you you're enjoying since you've been at the club is this because you've got it this is your team now we're seeing graham these are your players well i was just to ask that in terms of on the back of on the back of some positive results um we've had some clean sheets and, and and some good performances against tottenham against leeds against liverpool that that ends with 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 wins and um i think it's it's a, a, a normal that the longer you're with a team the longer you're with a group of players the coaching process would suggest that you know you get better with that you understand each other more you've you've gone through you know the ups and downs of the beautiful game of football and and um if you can get results because because football results help you to convince people that you're on the right path you yeah, need those yeah yes um, yeah but the result and, graham the results come the results have come because of the belief you've given the players to keep playing the way you've played even when you didn't get results isn't it you've maintained a let your philosophy and the way brighton play it would have been easy to have abandoned that a little bit to try and be a bit more pragmatic to turn things around. And, and to be fair, it didn't. It doesn't look from the outside that that's happened. You've you've kept that philosophy, and the players have kept that belief even at a time when they weren't getting the results. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's it can be a bit of a media perception. Our our, our uh, approach has always been. I think you have to be balanced in defence and attack. You have to use the attributes that you've got as a team. Clearly, you know we're Brighton and Hove Albion. We're not a Europa League side. We're not a Champions League side. Every every game in the Premier League is going to be a challenge for us. You know we're going to we're going to need to fight to stay in the Premier League. That's the reality. That doesn't mean to say we can't be ambitious. That doesn't mean to say that we can't say okay, this is the way we want to play. This is how we want to try and develop our club. We want to try and use the the resources in the academy. We want to try and um, recruit players from a maybe a lower level and help them get to the the Premier League and help them get to. The next stage of, in their careers, but ultimately, I think um, the, the beauty of football is there's no right or wrong way of playing football. Everyone's got a different way. There's a there's a different opinion. Um, our way isn't better or worse than anybody else, but it's it's a it's a way that we believe in, and and we think it can help us, you know, get results. But at the yeah. same time, we, you always respect the Premier League. You know, <laughs> there's there's such quality in the league. You see, Graham, he's being very quiet at the moment, but the former owner of Crystal Palace is sitting beside me here. And, of course, there's massive rivalry between Palace and Brighton. And, it, and it, I said to him, well, you're bright. in the last commercial break, Graham, I said to him, Brighton are doing very well. I'm so glad Graham's coming up. Yeah, poor relation in the Premier League. They appear to be doing quite well for the time being. Would you like to say that to Graham? Uh, if I, I just said it. Well, as you know, I'm going to desperately feign interest as a former <laughs> Palace, as a Palace man in the well-being of Brighton. But what, I wanted to pick up on something Graham said earlier on a moment ago, because one of the things um, that was mentioned about Chris Hutton's departure, and this may be media um, speak, Graham, that there was a style of play issue, that there was an idea and a notion that they wanted, that Tony wanted to change, uh, the, and Paul wanted to change the way Brighton set up and the, and the more entertaining football than perhaps Chris had brought to bear. When you came in, was that was that something that you were very conscious of? Because obviously people look at your career, you did wonders, but I think it was tremendous what you did to go abroad and coach and learn some your trade over yeah. there, come back in, come into Swansea that plays mm. a particular brand of football, and then come to Brighton. Was that very much something you were conscious of, that they were looking for you to change the way that they play? And also, what's the end game at Brighton in terms of... You know, what, where do you see success and how do you view success in your role as Brighton yeah, manager? A good question, yeah. Well, I think there's, uh, it, as you'll know, there's no point making a change if, if, if you're going to do exactly what's been done before. Does that, that wouldn't make sense. And I think... Tony well, staying in the Paul, Premier League is the remit. Though. That's why I'm picking up because that's what you've said. Of course, yeah. And, 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 and like I said, uh, how, how you do that is, is the choices. Everyone's got their, their, own, their own way of doing that. And it's not for me to say what's what's right or wrong and what, what was happening before is good or bad or better or worse. Um, all, all I know is that the, the club makes a decision to, to, to make the change, to, to go in a direction that, that wants me to sort of lead that direction. Uh, and, and that's based on probably the type of football that, that we've played. That football, I think, has been a, um, a balance of defence and attack throughout our, our time in, in Sweden, throughout our time at, at Swansea. I don't think you can do what we've done in, in Sweden by just playing a certain p 
possession-based attacking football. I think there has to be a, a balance there. So that's what we try to bring, um, f- f- combined with you know developing players. Because when you're Brighton, you want to try and stay in the Premier League, of course, but also you want to be ambitious and head towards the 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 the. the the, the mid-table area of the of the league, and and to not be involved in the relegation battles every year, but that's going to take time, and and that's, uh, I think you have a have to have an idea about how you're doing that. Of course, you can throw 100, 200, 300 million pounds, or you can, like I said, use your academy. You can um, uh, recruit from 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 markets that are maybe are below the Premier League level and develop players up to the the point that they fit into your style of play, and that's how you can grow and develop your club. Great, so the end game is it's a constant process. I think you, I think you, you've touched on it, Simon. Fundamentally, you, you have to stay in the Premier League. That's the that's the aim. That's the that's the main mm. goal, and then try to develop the club that you that you that you're moving away from that. Graham, thanks for being with us, mate. Just one thing struck me, and Simon and I were touching on that in the break here. Um, Six-year contract that you signed, which is quite unusual, of course, at your level of football. It strikes me that you're not just someone who Paul Barber uh, and the rest regard as someone who's just there to fight relegation. A six-year deal, Graham, that's more significant, I would have thought, no? Well, that's the aim, of course. But um, again, I think you have to be respectful of the competition that we're in and, and know where we've come from. When we when, when I first arrived, the club had got 36 points. Um, and, and you have to try and start to build from, from, from that Um yeah, I think the ambition of the club is to try to be a top 10 team in the Premier League. But always, always remember that the Premier League is that so, so competitive. And um, if you lose sight of that too quickly, you can get yourself into trouble. So we all know that contracts, are they are what they are. But the challenge for us is to keep moving forward and keep improving. Yes. Simon, I did look over your shoulder and I saw the names Welbeck and Lalana. What, what are you thinking about? Yeah, I mean, I, I was looking at it in the summer, Graham, and God forbid that I would make an observation about Brighton's transfer policy, but I'm about to. I was sort of surprised by it because I look at the nature of the purchases that you've made and the style of football that you want to play, irrespective of being pragmatic, because that's the thing, that's the balance. You're absolutely right. As a football manager, you know you have to get balance. Mm-hmm. But I looked at irrespective of the quality of Lana, Lana, I thought... Strange, as a former owner, strange decisions, sort of a dad's army mentality coming in and a strange set of decisions to bring these two players in. What was the thinking behind those two? Well, we, in the previous transfer window, we brought the likes of Alexis McAllister, um, Tariq Lamptey, uh, you know, mm-hmm. young players that, um, that, are, that are at the start of their careers and are relatively unproven at Premier League level. And um, we just felt that in that in the window that you refer to it was obviously coming through the covid period quite uncertain times um both of those guys were free transfers we picked up joel veltman as well for around a million euros and you bring in a bit of experience you bring in a bit of um understanding of the level um good attributes daily i think as a as a coach as a leader you can speak about what you need to do but sometimes it's it's nice to have guys that have been there that have done it that have that have that, that know what it takes to to work every day and to improve your environment because that's also important for us how how we work every day the the, the type of environment we have at the training ground how we want to be it, i think helps our players improve and that's how we can get the, the younger ones, the likes of Robert Sanchez, the likes of Aaron Connolly, the likes of Stephen Alzati, Ben White, who, who are, you know, academy players. But, but that's how we can try and help them get to the next, the next point in their careers. What is, um, we, we talk about, I mean, obviously I know Tony, I know his brother Darren, and, and obviously I've seen the job they've done with Brighton. And I have to begrudgingly say it's a tremendous job because back in the day, I remember going to the, the with Dean and getting watching my players get changed in a scout hut. But <laughs> looking at it now for you as a manager, you're, you're going through the gears, Graham. Your stock is high. Your reputation is, is growing. What does success look like for you? A six-year a six contract cuts both ways. It means that the club have you for six years and you have them for six years. And if the circumstances change and people fall out, then the dynamics change. And as you rightly say, contracts are what they are. But what does success look like for you? Well, I had seven years at Assund and and I never felt that I was thinking about moving. I never felt that I was going to leave anywhere. It was about trying to develop the club. I think um, 
yeah, I can speak about what's going to happen in two or three years' time, Simon, but you know that, that, that the reality of this job is you've got to try every day to improve, every every game to improve, and keep trying to move... The no, I don't want to put you in an invidious position about talking about leaving Brighton. I want to see what success looks like for you at Brighton, because at this moment in time, you're managing under COVID landscape. Tony has built the football club financially. There's a level of budget that you're going to be able to have to kick on... Brighton to where you might want them to be is going to need certain levels of support. And I'm, I'm not interested in putting you in that difficult position of saying, well, I'd like to go and manage XYZ club because that's not right and I wouldn't do it to you. I'm more interested in seeing what you think success within the role of Brighton for you is. Yeah, well, I think, like I said, you've got two ways of, of, of taking the jump um, in the Premier League. You, you invest hundreds of millions of pounds or you try to say, OK, this is a, a style of play. This is what we can identify our um, team to and our, our club to. And then, and then we use the resources that we've got really, really wisely. So the academy, um, we spend millions of pounds on that every year. We need to maximise that as, as, as much as we can. Um, how we recruit, recruit our players, we have, to be, we have to be clever because ultimately if we're just competing on financial terms, we, we're going to we'll hit lose, yeah. Yeah. So, so we have to So we have to look for players that are maybe undervalued or haven't reached their potential. And then we have to do the work there. So again, how you develop the environment every day can help that. Um, and I think if you do that, then you can uh, you can achieve results that are over and above what you think you you know what you think you can. But it, that clearly that the one the one is uh, very expensive and it, there's no guarantees, and the other one is there's no guarantees. But it's the way that we're going to do it. Um, you just have to be clear with that and and know that it's not going to be a it's not going to be a plain sailing one. Um, you're going to have to take some hits along the way because clearly with young players with players that are below the level, uh, below the level in inverted commas, they, they, need, they need to make the mistakes, they need to fail, they need to mm. understand what the Premier League is in order to feel comfortable and grow in it. Um, but but uh, as I've said, uh, the challenge with the Premier League is um, results are so difficult to come by and you need results to convince people that you're on the right path. Yes, points are difficult to get. Yeah, that's points are difficult. Great. That's the biggest Can I just challenge. ask, Graham, on the, on the uh, recruitment, because there, obviously a lot of clubs do it differently now and... I think obviously the path where you're going to be going down, the recruitment has to be good and has been good and got, got you a good squad at the moment and competition for places. Um, do you get involved in that heavily? How does it work at Brighton? Because I was, I was fascinated to hear Jurgen Klopp recently when he was put under a lot of pressure about where the centre-halves were coming in and he, he basically dismissed it in the end and said it's out of his hands because the recruitment the way the recruitment works at Liverpool, I'm sure he's got some sort of say, but he was quite dismissive about it and his involvement in it. What is the structure and your involvement like at Brighton with the recruitment? Yeah, I would say it's a structure. I mean, uh, the days of, of of a head coach or a manager, you, you know, I just don't know how it's possible for them to, to spend so much time making the right recruitment decisions. I have to trust the club. I have to trust the people I work with. Uh, of course, that, you know, it's I'm part of the conversation and it wouldn't make sense mm. for people to bring in players that, that, uh, that maybe won't fit into what we're trying to do. And, and, but it's, it's a structure where, where there's a, a collective responsibility and um, I'm there to help them. I, I think, yeah, recruitment is part of the solution, but it's not the full part. I think um, my job fundamentally is to make sure that the, the environment that the players come into um, is, is good. And, and that then you understand that when they come in, what how you can help them and what they need to do to develop and, and improve. So that's yeah, yeah. where my focus is on. Graeme, as always, we're running out of time. We've got about a minute, I think. So some quick one, uh, quick fire ones for you from people who are firing in questions to us. Who, who do you reckon has been your toughest Premier League opponent this season? Um, uh, I would say Manchester City. Yeah, yeah. Do you take them to win it outright, Graeme? Um, I think yes, I, w I would. Um, I don't normally um, dive into those type of questions, but I'll, I'll make exception on this 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 day. There's Paul. There's another Graham. Uh, there's a James. All Brighton fans. We're fifteenth at the moment. Ask the boss. Where will we finish? Top half. Oh, uh, I, yeah, that'd be nice. But all I'm thinking about is um, is is a, a a big game next Monday. That's all I'm thinking about. Okay, I don't know how you answer this one. Graham, your thoughts on VAR? You having it or you're not having it? Bit in mind Danny Murphy staring right at the screen. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm having it because it's it's here. Uh, um, yeah. And I'll try and support it. If you'd have asked me would I have had it in the first place, I would have said no because I'm a bit of a traditionalist. Um, but I'll support it as best I can now. Graham, terrific.
Terrific. We've loved having you. Uh, I think a week tonight you play Palace, you'll beat them, will you not, Graham? We'll try.